Welcome, welcome back to my channel friends and today I'm going to talk to you about why lenses that leave the total eye with negative spherical aberration may provide a better depth of focus than lenses that leave the eye with positive spherical aberration. Now, this is from a recent article that uh, Jack Holliday and uh, co-authors have written to the um, editors of the JCRS and where they actually justify a recent study by Koza and uh, co-authors wherein they found that lenses with negative spherical aberration provided a better depth of focus than lenses with positive spherical aberration, right? So this is basically um, what uh, uh, Jack Holiday also justifies giving an explanation through these diagrams. And let me take you step by step what these diagrams means. Uh, it is quite busy, uh, but we, I will try to justify, uh, you know, as um, as lucidly as possible so what you see in 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 picture um, a is that you know you have three eyes over here you have three eyes over here the first eye is left with positive spherical aberration the second eye is left with zero spherical aberration and the third eye is left with negative spherical aberration now in the in the first eye, if, if you see the positive spherical aberration, the marginal rays of light are over refracted. That is what we know about positive spherical aberration. Then the paraxial rays of light. The paraxial rays of light means the rays of light actually that are passing close to the optical axis of the lens and they are coming to a point over here focus at a point over here and the marginal rays of light are, are falling before that and this is basically the depth of focus of the lens this this area is basically the depth of focus uh, that is being provided the total ocular positive spherical aberration and where is the base, uh, depth for, uh, where is the best focus for the patient and the best focus is actually signified by this green um, line over here the best focus means actually it is at the midpoint of the marginal rays of light and where the paraxial rays of light are falling this is where the depth best focus is and that basically signifies your circle of least confusion or the midpoint of the Strom's conoid this is the Strom's conoid and the best focus is basically the midpoint of the Strom's conoid now in the second situation your eye has no spherical aberration so the marginal rays of light and uh, the paraxial rays of light are actually falling on the same point over here right they're falling on the same point so this kind of eye will have almost no depth of focus very marginal depth of focus but they will have a very high amount of clarity of vision now if the object is at infinity and then here in the third eye you have a negative spherical aberration and we know that negative spherical aberration means that the marginal rays of light are actually falling um, beyond you know uh, the uh, the paraxial rays of light so the marginal rays of light are falling over here and then this is your uh, depth of focus over here the area between the marginal rays of light and the paraxial rays of light and the best focus of the patient again is at the midpoint over here which is you know uh, uh, the uh, circle of least confusion over here now when the object is at infinity these are the patient's best focus over here when the object is at infinity here is the best focus with a uh, or with a positive spherical aberration um, you know eye and here is the best focus uh, of the patient with a negative spherical aberration eye right now let us see what happens when the when you have um, an object which comes closer to the eye um, at uh, at an intermediate distance right so here you have the intermediate distance over here um, at minus 1.5 diopter and you know at minus 1.5 diopter means a distance of 66 centimeters so what happens with an eye which has a positive spherical aberration lens the best focus is here this green line actually that doesn't shift right but when you have the target at an intermediate distance of around 66 centimeters this is what your blur circle looks like that's quite a high amount of blur circle right at this point of uh, at this point when the object is at the intermediate uh, when when you see an eye with a no amount of spherical aberration the blur circle is however a little less but the blur circle is actually smallest with the eye which has a negative spherical aberration and you can see this is basically the blur this this is this is where the 
blur circle is and it is the smallest over here and therefore an eye with a negative spherical aberration may have a better depth of focus than a positive spherical aberration over here and the same thing also applies to uh, uh, to an eye which uh, when the when the target is at a uh, uh, near distance and in this case the target is at minus 2.5 which signifies around 40 centimeters so the eye which has uh, positive spherical aberration again the blurs uh, the the best focus doesn't move um, but then because the near focus has actually come because the near ob the object has come towards the near at around 40 centimeters the blur circle is now even bigger the blur circle is now even bigger and if you compare this with a negative spherical aberration lens the blur circle here is much smaller than the eye which has a positive spherical aberration so based on this diagram the holiday actually holiday and co-authors actually uh, kind of justifies that you know uh, lens which leaves the eye with negative spherical aberration may be better uh, there is no benefit at intermediate or near for positive ocular spherical aberration and there is the same reduction in distance acuity as with negative ocular spherical aberration but what the authors justify is that negative spherical ab aberration will have the clearest image at the intermediate and near distances right so that's basically what the authors are trying to say uh there a lens which leaves the eye with negative spherical aberration we know that the cornea has average cornea has positive spherical aberration so if you have in your lens negative spherical aberration that lens will actually uh leave the total eye with a uh, negative spherical aberration and that may provide a greater amount of intermediate and near distances. I hope you find this interesting, this brief explanation interesting, um, you know, and, um, and uh, please keep following my channel and do not forget to subscribe. You can also log into my website quickguide.org to get more information.